Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I have here two gas cylinders that were donated to me by my Patreon, Joshua. Now these cylinders were originally used for dental work as the anesthesia. This one is ethylene and this one is nitrous oxide. Yes, laughing gas. Now, before you get too excited, uh, judging by the weight of it, I think this bottle's mostly empty. But it should be plenty of gas to do some experiments with and certainly enough to put into my gas collection, which I'll be starting today. So you know those little glass tubes with the uh, gas in it, the supercritical CO2? Well, I plan to put several other gases in there as well. I have a whole list of gases that I could theoretically do it with, and I'm gonna try to get as many as I can, and uh, these two here are definitely on that list. I also have uh, CO2, uh, dry ice, and I've been storing it inside of this uh, door flask that contains liquid nitrogen. Now, uh, Grant Thompson actually made a video earlier today uh, about what happens with dry ice and liquid nitrogen, which I thought was kind of hilarious because I actually have been storing dry ice and liquid nitrogen for the past couple of weeks. If you uh, freeze my hand here, but you can see the dry ice actually recrystallizes in the nitrogen into this uh, large grainy material. It's uh, still dry ice, but it doesn't really form into the shapes that it was originally and right now it resembles more like sand. So I'm actually going to put this back away for a minute. Let's go prepare some tubes and let's uh, add three gases to my gas collection. Uh, one thing I'd also like to mention is the fact that I'm using a lapel mic now, paid for by funds with Patreon. So if you'd want to help donate to get me some more of these things, uh, feel free to do so. The link is always in the description. So let's go do it. So I have here a heavy duty borosilicate glass tube. This is roughly 15 inches long, 10 millimeters in diameter, with a two millimeter wall thickness. Now for the size of ampules I've been making, this tube is enough to do two of them. So I'm gonna split this tube into two parts. Here it goes. I'm just gonna heat the middle of it up and then pull them apart. Okay, now that the glass is soft, I'm just gonna yank these apart just a little bit like this. I'm going to heat one of them up a little bit more, pull it off, okay, now I'm going to snip the end of this, just like so, and then hit the flame seal it. Okay, let that cool a little bit, now I'm going to grab this other end of it, and do pretty much the same thing, but I'm not going to snip it off this time. You see, the problem I've been having is the combustion products of this torch actually produces uh, water vapor. And when I've got the tube cooled down to cryogenic temperatures, any water vapor that gets in instantly solidifies and gets trapped. So I must do it in such a way that the gases have no contact to the outside air while I'm sealing it. Okay, let's give this a stretch like that, try to keep it straight. And there's my ampule done. Now, earlier I made a little piece of glass out of another one here. I just stretched the end of this into kind of a capillary tube. That way it's nice and thin. I can reach down the neck, and that way I can purge the gas from this ampule so that there's no oxygen and nitrogen left in there. Now that I have the ampule made, I'm gonna measure its weight on this precision scale here. I'm also gonna measure the weight of a balloon and a rubber band with a wire as well. This way I can know exactly how much gas I'm putting into the vial, which is very important because if I put too much in there, the pressure will build up to the point where it'll just shatter the glass. I'll explain a little bit more about that later. So what we have here, 23.83 grams. Let's just tear that and now, and now, Let's go get some nitrous oxide. All right, let's grab some nitrous out of this bottle. Let's get a little bit of that. Now, I really can't weigh this on a scale and get the value for the nitrous oxide in the balloon because the nitrous oxide, being a gas, takes up so much volume that it's actually displacing air. And that's displacing a significant mass fraction compared to the gas's own mass. So what I have to do is take the density of the gas and then 
adjust my numbers so that I get the right one. Fortunately, nitrous oxide is almost exactly twice as dense as normal air. Which means I could easily set this on the scale, get the weight of the gas by multiplying the weight by two. That means if I get half a gram on the scale, I'll have a full gram of nitrous oxide here. Okay, so we have 0.57 grams of gas here. It looks like we're slowly losing mass, probably because the balloon's leaking slightly. So that means I have roughly 1.1 grams of nitrous oxide, which is exactly how much I want. So now I've got this balloon on here. Hopefully I didn't lose too much gas while doing this, but it's all right. I planned to lose a little bit. I'll lock this rubber band in place with this piece of wire here. There, now we've got a sealed rubber band on the end of the ampule. Now, I need to condense this gas into a solid form. To get the gas to condense into a solid, I'm gonna have to get it very cold. Fortunately, I have some liquid nitrogen on hand. You can actually see the nitrous oxide in there, condensing into a solid and then shattering as it continues to cool. And this balloon over here is slowly getting smaller. Look at that shrinking. It's just pulling all the gas down inside of the tube. It will eventually form a near vacuum. There we go. Sucking all the gas down. And there's all my nitrous oxide. So now that we've got it cooled off, let's go ahead and seal it. Try to heat evenly on all sides so it shrinks in symmetrically. There we go, separated. Now flame seal this. And there we have it. A sealed ampule with nitrous oxide inside of it. So for this step I'm gonna need some safety goggles over top of my prescription safety specs. Okay, so now I'm gonna take it out of the liquid nitrogen. And now the pressure can develop. Let's just set it here in the snow. The snow looks cold, but it's plenty warm enough to vaporize the nitrous oxide. So now I'm going to let this equalize to the ambient temperature. And then, if it still doesn't explode, I'm going to drop it into some warm water to do a full pressure test of the glass. If there's some defect in the glass or something, it will explode. And it exploded. So now that the tube has warmed up to a balmy 5 degrees Celsius, we should be able to rub off the frost here and see liquid nitrous oxide inside the tube. There we go. So far so good. There's a liquid nitrous oxide under pressure. I gotta heat test this to make sure it can handle uh, ambient temperatures during the summer. Let's uh, not stand directly over this. I'm just going to set this down in there to make sure it can handle this kind of heat. Okay. Now I just wait for the temperature to equalize. And if it doesn't explode, then it's probably good. Okay. It's been a few minutes. And there hasn't been an explosion, so I'd say it's got a pretty decent chance of surviving. Let's pour off the water now. That way I can reach in here without getting my glove too wet. There we are. Tube supercritical nitrous oxide. Like as it cooled off, it just became liquid. <laughs> That's awesome. So here's a better shot of the liquid nitrous oxide inside the tube. As you can see, there it is. So I have a little tin foil boat set up here. And I've just poured some acrylic into it. Now this acrylic will take a little while to set up, but once it's mostly set up, then what I'll do is I'm going to take this glass tube filled with nitrous oxide, and I'm going to put this in there on top of the mostly set up acrylic, and I'm going to pour in some more. That way I completely encapsulate it into the 
castable acrylic, which is very hard and should absorb any shock from any explosion that may be caused by this glass breaking, if it breaks inside the acrylic. At least that's the idea. Anyway, I actually have a few of those made up already, so let's go have a look at those. So here are two of those acrylic blocks that I made earlier. This one is CO2 and this one is ethylene gas. Now, the acrylic has had plenty of time to set up completely, and so it's fully hard, and I'm not too afraid of them exploding on me now. I'm still wearing goggles, however. <laughs> now these both just came out of the fridge, so the ethylene is still liquid, but uh, as it warms up, the ethylene will go to a supercritical state and stop being liquid. The CO2 probably won't do that at room temperature, but it will if I put it into hot water. Now these are not quite finished yet, I want to uh, grind the sides so they're nice and flat and then re-dip them in acrylic. That way they're nice and clear. Slap on a label what they are and uh, that's what I'll have for my collection of gases. So how about that? So over the course of doing this video, I had many failures. Those uh, glass tubes, I broke about six of them at least. The reason for that is the fact that the gases have a critical density. Uh, CO2, 0.45 grams per cubic centimeter, nitrous oxide, about the same, and ethylene is 0.2 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, that is the density that the liquid has at its critical point. That's the density that the liquid is just before it goes supercritical and becomes a gas. Before I started this experiment, I was under the impression that if I put more gas into the ampule, then it'll just have more volume of liquid. It turns out, however, if I add more gas to the ampule, I'm increasing the mass inside of its volume. The volume of the ampule is about four milliliters, which means that if I put more than about a gram of nitrous oxide in there, then I'm way above critical density of the gas. Now, the critical gas is still compressible. You can still compress it, but it's very difficult to compress. The ideal gas law is almost completely useless at this point. In order to half the volume, I've got to quintuple the pressure, or in the case of ethylene, possibly even more than that. Which is why I had so many failures on the ethylene gas. It wasn't until I started precisely measuring the amount of gas I was putting in the tube and making sure it was just a little bit more than the critical density before I was finally able to have the tube stop exploding on me. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time. So with all the glass explosions that I've been around lately, you would be unsurprised if I told you that this cut on my face was due to a piece of glass hitting me. But it turns out it's not. It's actually due to this piece of metal falling on my face from off this wall here. I was in here cleaning the garage and I didn't really know what to do with this so I hung it up on a nail and it immediately pulled the nail out of the wall and hit me in the face. <laughs> uh, the craziest things injure me. I don't think I've actually ever been injured severely in a video. I mean, I burn my fingers all the time, but anyway.